Hey YouTubers, camera prep here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, an event scenario. Obviously the reason why I say scenario is because it's, um, God forbid it, it will never happen, but what, uh, what might happen and what could happen as well in my sort of eyes and hopefully I can give some people an ideas on what to do and also hopefully people out there can sort of share their ideas on what can happen. So the event I'm gonna, it worries me the most in survival situations or in preparedness. Um, like I said before, hopefully by now you'll have a list of um, what you think may happen in an event uh, scenario. Hopefully you do. But my one of my top lists that I have um, is a problem is a blackout. Um, also in that sense of an EMP strike as well. Um, but we're going to mostly talk about those two subjects and sort of give you an idea what may happen um, during these events and what you could do um, to get you started in preparing for it and what you could do during the, the thing as well. But I'm going to give you my sort of way I would handle it and things like this. So I'm going to give you a sort of backdrop. Um, obviously a blackout on EMP strike can happen anytime. Um, it can happen during the day and also during the night. Um, but a blackout, obviously, for people who do not know, basically is when all electricity, like your TVs and your lights, um, even the basic things from cooking, if you have an electric cooker, will completely go, will, will completely go dead. Um, so you won't be able to contact anyone, um, won't be able to ring, or it's literally go dead, hence why they call it a blackout. Um, an EMP is an electric magnetic pulse, it could happen two ways. Um, one way, obviously, it could be a terrorist attack, whether it be through um, someone that put on an explosive device <coughs> next to a substation or anything, and it take, wipes out the whole whole city. Another way, obviously, if it's an attack, in a sense of if another country was to detonate an explosion, um, round about, I think it's about 10, 15 miles above us, us up, above us, if not more, um, will, call, will cause an electro electromagnetic pulse. Um, the reason why I believe it, an EMP rather than over a nuclear attack, not a sense of a nuclear attack won't happen, God forbid it doesn't, but I, I believe that if you're an attacking force or you want to occupy a land, you don't want to blow it to smithereens, you want to have it in, in somewhat good or pristine condition so when you do invade you have the facilities and resources there to do so so an EMP strike is perfect for that because the only thing that you take out is the electricity supply apart from the obviously you won't take out any buildings but anyway so I'm going to do the scenario where it is night time so you've put your kids to bed um, you've gone to sleep um, so you sleep all the way and then the, the blackout happens. Now, first thing to do, obviously you, you will not know until you wake up in the morning. Uh, so when you wake up, obviously there is, you can't turn, you can't turn the lights on if it's still dark at night time when you get up. There's no TVs and things like that. I would say these first probably few hours, there's not much panic going on pure reason you probably think it's just domestic so in a sense of I don't know someone's cut through the wire or something something so easy that it'll probably be fixed in a few hours so you're probably not panicky as such um, but you're probably wondering why you're not getting you're not be able to ring out and things like that so the first three to four hours will be peaceful um, in yourself you won't be you won't be panicky including the outside world as well they, they won't know anything to do with it. Um, so within, I would say within day one, um, I would say after 12 hours, yes, you'll start to question, you know, what's going on? And this is when you need to start, right, okay, something might be up. So you might have to start thinking of getting your, uh, even even if it's if it back on the next day, still bring out, bring out your bug out bag and check it through. Make sure you've got everything ready, including if, your first aid kit is in check. Um, your bag, you've got all everything you need. You might not need it at this time. Um, the next day, 24, between day one and day two, again, 
you're probably fine. I would say 40 to 50 percent of people won't be as panicky, uh, but you might find that the following day where people can't buy groceries because they everything will be run by electric, so you can't get money out of the ATM, you can't pay, pay by card. So, this is when people will start to get frustrated. You can't fill up with fuel as well on the car um, because they, they, everything runs out electric. So this is when between between sort of in between day sort of two and three, so so forty eight hour mark and up to the seventy two hour mark, this is where people will start to get frustrated and annoyed uh, and out on the streets. This is when you know something is going down. This is when you know you need to start planning. Now <clears throat> at that situation, if you have prepared, um, don't go out. Secure your house and stay indoors um, unless you really really have to leave um, at this point in the stage as well if you have people in your your crew or your group that you've organized this is a time when hopefully they should have arrived by then um, if they haven't then um, hopefully they'll arrive before you make the decision whether you're staying or going it's your responsibility to think of your family, even though your your group and community that you've got in, it's your responsibility. Again, if you have got a group, also have a plan B as well. So if you if they do not arrive, you've got somewhere else where you can meet them. But that's a different subject. So those between day two and up to the 72 hour mark on day three, secure your house and sit everybody down. Um, you need to do rotationals. So in the sense of, especially during the night, make sure you have always someone up to make sure nothing's sort of happening, even down the streets or anything, anything too aggressive that you might have to think to evacuate. Um, so it will start to increase between then. Day three will be the day that you, whether you think whether you're safe indoors or actually leaving your vicinity. This depends where you are. If you're in a city, I would suggest that you would leave unless you've got a way of uh, really fork knocks in your house in the city then you might be a little bit more secure but if you if you're in a city leave that city because day three onwards will be panic for everyone everybody will won't get into the mindset just yet of trying to find food or water for their family but they will start to do things that you probably wouldn't expect them to do. For instance, you probably think Joe Bloggs walking down the street that says good morning to you every morning or good afternoon, so um, you'd be amazed and a situation like this can change. So that's where you'll make the decision whether you stay or leave. But always constantly uh, evaluate it. So every few hours or every 10 minutes if you have to, evaluate whether you should stay or go and you need to make decisions as quick as possible. For me, I will, for day three, again, depending on the situation, I live in an urban environment. I live between two valleys. I'm near enough walking distance between my house to the fields. So it's not heavily populated. Where I live, it's a, in where I live, there's approximately 50,000 people in this house, in this sort of, in this community, in this sort of uh, county. Um, so there's not many people in this town, I shouldn't say county is a big thing, in this town I should say, so there's not many people compared to um, Enfield or, um, that's where I used to live, Enfield or in places where it is heavily populated as well, where it's all congested. So. I'm reasonably safe, I'm not safe as in such, but I'm reasonably safe, so I can monitor the situation probably every six hours, Maybe, hopefully not less, but I can still monitor it, and if I have to, I can go up in the hill straight away. But always constantly monitor the situation, always make sure that you're safe. If you feel that you're not, leave. Okay, so day three is the day that you need to decide, and the day three is you really need to get your prepping into gear. Now, after day three, obviously, if nothing has come back on, in a sense of electricity, things like that, you know it is a long-term situation. 
hopefully no longer than uh, three months or or even a week hopefully touch wood again but this is the situation when you start to think to yourself you, you need to make sure that you you start to work out your long-term plans and what you're going to do and where you're going to go because after that period there will be civil disorder on the streets uh, police will be police fire services ambulances will be completely overwhelmed with the amount of pressure they'll be put under you will be having to defend yourself probably 95 to 99.9 percent .9 of the time so you need to make sure that you have everything in gear including ways to protect yourself okay so i would say if for the first two three weeks um i probably not get many people people that know me probably don't not aware of this but but i would say the first two to three weeks if you haven't got them in your group whether you you know them or not within the first two or three, three weeks I wouldn't invite them in pure reason again in a survivor situation you do not know how people react to that situation they could be the most caring the most sort of um, loving people but when they're starved for food or anything like that this is when people change so I would say within two or three, the two or three week mark, do not invite them in. Okay, fair enough. You know, a couple of months down the line, in this scenario, you know, you, you may invite one or two more in, but make sure that you regularly make sure you assess them to wherever to make sure they're safe to do so. Your main priority is to protect your children. So if you're like myself, I've got five kids. You you have to make sure the the right people are coming into the group. If they're not, you know, it's up to them to prepare for themselves. It's one of the harshest things that you can do. It's one of the most terrible things that you can do. You feel that you feel really bad for saying it. I do. Um, but your main priority is yourself and your family. That's that's what that matters to you. In in many situations, it has, that's the most important thing, is to care for yourself, you know. This is why I'm trying to spread the news now so that people can get prepared. Planning what you can do before, or hopefully it does happen. Again, make sure that your your food preps are always updated and rotated. Um, at least check them. I would say uh, I do mine every once a month. I rotate all my food. Uh, I make sure I've got everything that I need for between sort of an eight month, eight month, eight week to 12 week period. Um, make sure you, if you need to rotate your water, so if you're using tap water, uh, make sure you empty that every month at water. Tap water can last up to 12 weeks, um, it's been known, but I do mine every month. Um, so there's always a fresh supply of tap water. Um, so make sure you empty that, refill it. Uh, make sure you have your, do your itinerary in your bug out bag check it at least every month or six weeks check that just make sure everything's still in place and or add new items or take things out you'll be amazed that a bug out bag will change as your lifestyle changes and etc etc make sure that's up to date make sure that all your security measures are in check so if you've got um, bars that need to go behind the door make sure this they're secure still make sure they're still well fitted um, make sure that you have checked literally everything that you need to do literally on a periodic period so between in between a month and six six week period always check it make sure that your family even your children are taught um, I would say not necessarily the ins and outs of prepping depending on their age but the basics that they need to know in a situation that something happens, they need to do A, Y, A, Y and A, B and C, I should say, sorry. Um, so make sure that they are aware of what to do. Uh, make sure that the people that you are um, allowing in your group are aware of the situation and what they need to do. Tell them um, when they need to come over. Um, if they can't manage to get there, make sure you have a location where you can all meet. Having a location is really important, not just for them, but for you as well. 
you imagine if you are uh, one or two of you are at work uh, or, at, or your kids are at school and you can't get home for any reason you can go to this emergency location and they all can meet there so a location like that is very important so make sure that you've got all these steps even write it down what you need to do set yourself with goals a blackout most blackouts that we face um, will sort of come back after after a few days if it's an EMP strike um, hopefully it doesn't happen but if there's an EMP strike then you could be talking about a long term thing um, anywhere but you can depending on, on how much um, resources that the governments have in terms of backup sort of generators and etc and if they haven't got a Faraday cage it's obviously going to be longer but anywhere between probably six months plus even 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 not longer you can have it to a year two years it all depends so if it's an EMP strike it's a totally different scenario you need to prepare for long term and you also need to prepare if it's an EMP strike for a an invasion as well so you need to have a location where it's secure and out of the way and away from cities because that's where the invading force will happen um, so hopefully obviously this will give some people some questions that they want to ask I'm more than willing to answer them um, a blackout for everybody will be scary including kids kids especially because my kids bless them some of them like still like their the light on at night um, so make sure you have games for them ball games to keep them occupied and give them tasks or chores to make sure that they're actually <coughs> taking their mind off the situation um, if they are, do ask questions about what's happening um, tell them as, as easy as you can and as, as simplistic as you can in a sense of um, don't tell them all the scary sides of it and what it is and what it may be um, just tell them you know the most simple things simple situation like you know the, the lights of uh, lights every all the electricity supply has gone out and we're not too sure why yet but as soon as we find out we make sure that you're you're safe to safe with us just something simple and um, so they're, they're not scared and not panicky uh, another good tip if you have if you have um, if you can, I know some people can't, is to get a nice, nice, um, good, loyal dog as well. If there's a situation where there is chaos on the streets um, and you're having to go out in your bag out location, having a dog there uh, that is loyal and is trustworthy will alert you to most amazing things. It will sense danger before you even sense it yourself. So having a loyal dog is brilliant. Um, my dog still needs training, um, she is a husky cross um, so she still needs a lot of training so we, we're slowly getting there but, but yeah so make sure you have that, make sure with a blackout as well another quick tip is batteries again if you know how to build a Faraday cage uh, make sure you have um, electrical things in that as well things like radios um, walkie talkies, wind up radio I should say everything that you think you need including if you've got a, a spark plugs or things that could start a car in, in the Faraday cage so that so when the event does happen EMP strike for instance if it is an EMP strike you have some supplies there for that thing as well but batteries make sure you have tons of them for your torches, candles, blankets because it is going to get cold um, make sure you have first aid kits, plenty of food for the first probably. If you if you've you can't get as much as a week, uh, three months, even if having only only a week is fine. But have other means to for obtaining food, i.e. a obviously so you can go fishing or an air rifle for for hunting things as well. So make sure you have something there so you can acquire food. And gain knowledge in food for free so the fruits and berries that you can eat out in the field uh, that's another good thing as well um, so blackout is at the top of my list 
as well as an EMP strike. There is other things as well that I, I do worry and fear about. But the reason why the blackout was at the top of my list is because nine times out of ten, in all scenarios, a blackout will occur, no doubt. Um, through if whether it be a war, whether it be through a flooding, you know, um, a terrorist attack, um, sort of uh, recession as well. So it can all happen. So a blackout is really, really one of the most serious. <clears throat> one of the most serious things that I worry about. Well, I hope this video was um, informative. Um, if you please do have any questions or any other suggestions what you could do in a blackout, please let me know. But what I will, will say is that between, like I said, between the first day and the second day, don't you do not need to panic as much, depending, obviously, if it's an EMP strike, then it's something that you can see and then you know there's something wrong. But the first first day or two days of a blackout, you do not need to panic or worry, but make sure you have your preps. Still plan between those two times, um, unless obviously it's an EMP strike. But I hope to speak to you soon. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, um, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Um, it's always good having new subscribers. Um, and also, um, I love to hear from my old subscribers as well. Um, it's always good from hearing you guys. Um, until then, um, see you soon. This is Camera Prepper out.